Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Review. We are here every Thursday night, 7 p.m. EDT time. Thank you, everybody, for showing up here, hardcore fans in the house. And tonight, look at this. Our prayers are answered. We've been bitching about it for four or five shows, these eight-minute small shows. Man, they've really been, uh, you know, getting me upset, and I have definitely been talking about this season in a, in a negative light. I know they're moving, but I have not been happy with it. And tonight, 22 minutes. So let's get going and let's watch some Inside Star Citizen. Ooh. Oh, they're, they're effing with the volume again. They're effing with the volume again. I think my favorite alien species in Star Citizen, if I had to pick one, if I had to, I love them all. Yeah, uh, I have a deep fondness for the Banu. Like the visual architecture. They just seem like kind of cool critical thinkers. The Xi'an I'm closest to mentally, meaning I know more about them than all of the others. <laughs> they're like the chill, relaxed ones. Even though they're so friendly, they look like they can pack a punch, you know? So far, the ones that have piqued my interest is the one blow. They're the, the predators of the space in our universe. Yeah. And they look really kind of fierce and ferocious. You know, when you yeah. encounter them, um, you know you're in a lot of trouble. Good. But they're alien race. Probably the Vandal. There's no alien ship better than the um, the Talon. Isn't the Talon Tavarin? It is Tavarin, yeah. But Boom. the Tavarins themselves, I'm not keen on. <laughs> ship. But uh, yeah, the Vandal, uh, they just tick all the right. Called him out. That's great. That was great. That was great, Jared. Shame. Good job, Jared. Shame. Good job. He's Shame. getting points. He's getting points for me tonight. He's on Boxes point. for me. <laughs> alien Week is here, and with it, our annual celebration of Xion, Banu, Tavarin, and even the dreaded here, Banduel. And if you haven't already, check out the various contests and activities happening across social on the robertspaceindustries.com website. But for us here at ISC, we thought we'd take this week to dedicate entirely to exploring the current status of the highly anticipated Banu Merchantman. Now, warning, much oh, of it is still in gray box saucy. or early white box phase. Still, there's a lot to explore of its mysterious interior. Let's find out more. Thank you, Tech. This is valuable. I think when tackling play. a ship that's got so many unknowns about it, it's in, you know, completely new art style, or it's not something that a lot of the team kind of worked on before, we kind of need to make sure that we're approaching it in the most sensible way we can. <laughs> All right, so some old thunder. We are jumping in with our devs. Uh, we have got uh, vehicle art director, Mr. Ben Curtis. Hello. Hello. And senior vehicle designer, Mark Gibson. Hello. Holy beer. And we are going to be showing the very real, very current uh, progress of the Banu think, Merchantman. Before we Dude, I think I could pull that off. I, I think I could look like homeboy over there with that beard. I, 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 I Maybe I should just go full beard mode. Bald and beard is a statement, man. Bald and beard, you just don't care. And I have to say, kudos, bravo to this gentleman here for just just representing bald man. Way to go, brother bald man. Way to go. <laughs> Get into it. Let's talk a little bit about where we are uh, in that process. Uh, it's a very ben, you know the Benu Merchantman has you, been Spike. in development for a while, and it's not in development. Set this up for us. Where are we at? Uh, overall, yes. the exterior is going through its gray box pass. <laughs> Thank you, um, so it's looking a little bit more advanced than um, the interior of the ship that we'll see in a bit. Um, <laughs> we've exploded. basically got two artists on it, and we kind of chop the ship up into different um, parts that they can work on. And uh -huh. um, we're just going through and making sure that everything that needs to fit in the ship is going to fit Listen, in the ship. Get it ready. And it's worth noting that this is a landmark uh, a ship for Star Citizen. This is this He's is this one of the more seriously. biggest Good. ships of its Bay kind. Uh, it's got entirely new purposes with the shops and everything inside. It's 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 pushing an, uh, an alien race into a new size and scale that we've never done with any of the other uh, you know ships outside of Squadron right, 42. Yes. Uh, there so is a lot excited about uh, the to this ship. So with that, Let's jump on in and start with the exterior. So we've got the entire front with its hidden weapons that come out from there for the pilot control. It's the size dual of docking thing, collars, man. one on either side. It's wings with the new animation designs for them, for how they're actually going to deploy. As you can see, there's a lot of detailing on the wing section, very elaborate and 
almost elegant design on it because Explode at the end of this is something they it. use as a trademark <laughs> to show how wealthy they are and well they're doing as a trader. That's a lot of detail, even for Grey Box face. <laughs> yeah, it's a new art style. We've you know we've done the Defender, obviously, but for the the UK team, it's it's the a curves, kind of new art man. style, and also you know the Defender is this would vastly be a hard smaller this would in be terms a very of size. Shit. There's a our normal kind of approach to how we kind of layer in the details um, has needed a bit of kind of alteration, um, and we've had to kind of think about how we're going to bring in some of those smaller scale elements to give a better sense of size and scale because. Yeah, when you zoom out from this ship, you still want it to feel huge. And, yeah. and you know, it deserves to feel huge. It is absolutely monstrous. Um, so I think you know, we've, we've had to spend a bit more time working out how we're going to add detail to it. There's still a lot to be done. There's still a lot of the, the finer details <laughs> to be added um, because that does impact so, on how we, how we model the ship, how we make the ship. Pop quiz for chat right now and for everybody watching on YouTube. I'm very curious... Uh, if you liked the older style of the Banu ship in, ter in terms of the art, in terms of the concept art, uh, and you liked it and are disappointed by the looks of what we're seeing now, press one. If you are fine with what you're seeing, uh, press two. And if you like it better than the original concept art, press three. So I'm very curious to see. One, I don't know, I totally forgot the choices now. So yeah, it's, it's been it's been yeah a fun challenge for the artist so far. I understand there was a recent change One to two. the animation. One and two, three. Yep. I'll have to go get in. Three. Milks is three. Oh. Two and three. Interesting. They were that's very a, quick. That's a mix. That's oh, the a animation very big was mix. Near final. It was just a make sure we got it in. <laughs> I think it's okay. a fair disclaimer for this. Absolutely no part of what you're seeing today. Yep, it's fine. I was like, I remember seeing the the uh, play blast in Max, and they were a, a little bit um, felt a bit weightier and a bit sleeker than that. Um, but yeah, there there is some kind of subtle movement where you know panels open up um, and they allow for the the kind of like the rest of the wings to slide in. Extreme and you know, as with everything we do, we make sure that there's not space magic going on. Things actually kind of uh, fit and function as they should. Um, so yeah, you know, it gives a few more challenges. Um, but I think the end result is is a much nicer kind of silhouette when you see this thing parked. Let's move inside. Let's start with the bridge since we're already there. Okay, so um, yeah, the interior of the ship, like I say, is, is the main, um, or you're going to see now, um, is mainly in kind of white box. The concept mesh yeah, um, gave yeah. us like a really good starting point. Um, as always with, with concept meshes, we had to do you know, a fair amount of kind of optimizations and remodeling to kind of get it to the point where we can get it into engine and kind of start walking around it. Right, the, the bridge. That would is, be the biggest um, difficulty. Try, I'm trying not to say the same thing the, for every area. The module, the modular design, um, and and that, you, know, <laughs> you can just any any area of the ship you go into, just know that in the back of my head, I'm thinking it's huge. Yeah, you know, we've, we've obviously got the kind of like the the four control seats. And Mark, do you want to talk through the different I love the, the shadowing yeah. from the architecture so, of the ship? Uh, as ever, the the Banu don't have captains. They they're a very family communal sort of unit so it lore. didn't make sense to have a, a primary captain station for the bridge section right. in reality everything would be relatively communal. even yeah, so communal. we have the the pilot seat and control which obviously with a ship at this scale it's very difficult to get a good view from the pilot seat to get a good view of what's actually happening so a lot of the animations need to be very alien so that you can get the pilot into a good position so they'd be able to see what they're oh. doing so we, we use a lot of Zion Tech, which lift things up through gravity, so they can get this fantastic view out the front, so you can see where you're actually going. So you've got your primary pilot seat, then to the right of them you have your co-pilot seat, then two stations behind are for the large remote turrets that the ship has for defense. So if you ever need it, people can quickly jump into these seats That's and get into the action to try and defend you from whatever's happening. What's up, Damon? It's coming up behind on the sides. Obviously, if it's coming on front, the pilot has more than enough means to be able to deal with it themselves. And if your instinct was to stop the YouTube video and go immediately to comments and say it's pronounced Sheon, Mark. Yeah, it is pronounced Sheon. Get Xion. a better hobby. Oh, I'll say you'd be correct. I like that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm giving I'm giving applause to Jared for keeping people on point with the lore, especially those who are designing the ships. <laughs> Quite important, actually. Quite important. I reckon behind the bridge where the actual operations occur, you have some basic features for if stuff goes wrong. So you have some suit lockers to put emergency suits I in. I love so the bridge area. The bridge is really space. Definitely dig it. Definitely dig it. 
but if something goes wrong, they do want them <laughs> down. So next to the actual escape pods, you have your suit lockers to quickly get suited and booted, and then be able to get into your escape pod and get out of there if you need to. So they have one on either side, one for each of the actual crew that would be on the bridge, as well as a couple of extra, because leading a little further down, we actually have the, the more habitation side of the ship. God, we'll, this thing's going we'll to be that when amazingly we get there. Directly behind, we also have expansive. the entryway to get inside the Crazy. main man turret. Look at these, look at this. This is kind of one of the rooms we spent oh. a bit of time kind oh. of playing with in white box and making sure we got oh. it right. Uh, we really wanted this to kind of feel... Um, it's the it. Xavier room. Yo. It's the Professor Xavier room. Thank you. Thank you for gifting those subs out there, Explorer. Way to go. You are a boss, buddy. Thank you for supporting the channel. It's gonna be thank you. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Boy, this is just, this is the Charles Xavier room right here, man. Like, quite a moment walking into it. Uh, go on, Jarrett. No, no. It, it, <laughs> okay. even, even in gray box, this is quite a moment here. Yeah, there, there was some really nice bits in the kind of concept where you had these kind of like um, <laughs> these, these like lit walls, and we tried to kind of pull some of that into. And wow. I think it's almost having that kind of moment of um, yeah, uh, like solitude before alien, you kind dude. of get yoinked up into dude, to battle. Um, so it's is... you know, quite a lonely oh area of the God. ship. Everywhere else on the ship kind of feels like it's it's built for like like Mark was saying, like oh. family. Whereas this is kind of very that purposeful. You, you know what you're slick. getting into as soon as you walk in that room. That and obviously slick. the exterior shell there, when all said would, done, would open up and reveal yeah. you to the outside. Yeah, space. absolutely. So an, an interesting thing about the, the turret, it's, it's probably some people going to be curious boy. about, is how it actually Ooh. works, because the, there's no big arm there behind it or anything like that. Once again, it's using alien technology. It that does look alien, keeping doesn't it? Up in it? Place, which is it looks so what the alien. They did a good job. They did and a there's an air shield that will be the going around the top of here, so that when you actually enter the turret, you're not um venting the entirety of the room um, right obviously that does mean that people could try and sneak onto your ship but while you turret's man that might not be the safest thing for them to do i love that Xi'an fight of the navigator tech moving down from the actual bridge area we then move into the sanctuary yes, yes so it is. the banu are known for being very multicultural when it comes to their religious beliefs. So they have a entire area dedicated wow. to worship, to fortune, like church, to hoping like that things are going to go well for them a, or that the next trade deal is going to be a good one. <laughs> oh, so they got like a little altar sort of at the end area. of the Tree of Life, which is how the Ooh. entire ship's built around. And oh, oh, it makes sense oh, oh, for it to be at the end of the tree because it's, it, awesome. it's where everything comes out from. Right. So that is it was important to, cool to keep that touch. feel that it runs through the root of the ship. We're going off the side of the sanctuary <laughs> area. We have <laughs> the med bay, something that people are very curious about where it actually was. Um, it's just off to the side, just behind the bridge, just near where all of the actual habitation is. You have a primary medical care bed. Yeah. Which it does look do a your bit day -to -day like that alien's healing. And then you have Prometheus. Recovery bed similar to the ones we have on the Carrick. Now, rather than just being a bed, decide to try something a little different. It's now these <laughs> pools of healing gel that you lie in just to recover from any significant operation that you had. Yeah, I think I think yeah, this was again an excuse to kind of just push the ship away from what we're used to seeing. Yeah, um, good. So originally we had like the three beds lined up in here, and yeah, you know, it was functional. It was you know it still looked good it was just like oh, do you know it'd be really nice though if these you know if you you had your operation and then you know you just sink down into that recovery board wow look yeah. at those things man times drippings with goo yeah that's exactly. crazy secretly those, those took behind so the actual cool. medical section is where the actual medical officer would work so it, it's his main station as well as storage supplies for whatever medical supplies that he needs Obviously, at the moment, it's just the back of the bed, but it's where you do refills on the bed or anything Their else. Their pads are so alien Obviously, the doors too. across the entire that. ship are very alien in appearance. Yeah, they did a good job on so all they, of this. Like, yeah, those pads. They make sense, like, but at the same time... Oh, like, the you, door, you, the way that door closed, are you kidding me, It was very important me, like, going across this to make everything that was awesome. make sense to the human eye, but at the same time be so different. So you, you immediately recognize it as a door, but once it starts actually animating yeah, and doing yeah, something it, yeah, it yeah. feels completely alien and yeah. even doing the general design of the ship it was important to keep that consistent something that is easily recognizable but also completely different what's up what fingers 
Moving on from the shrine area, we move into the recreation and social habitat. It's engaged professional. Area. So you've got your <laughs> food maker along with areas that actually engaged. Eat, as well as the actual social area. So people can sit around, talk, plan stuff out. And I think yeah, one of yeah, the things that's that we shameful, Mel. I, I, I don't like when they do that when they bump up the price like that. I really don't. Characters and the the Banu is a, a race that generally a bit taller, a bit larger. Um, so there's that kind of balance between making things um, f- work for both scales of character and, and making sure that you know um, we don't end up with you know, like I say, like the the the, the child in the scene. I remember we brought it up in one of the the um, the update meetings. And you know the the consensus was well yeah this is a banu ship, and whilst they support all the other races that, that we have in our universe, um, ultimately it's their ship, and so things should be made to to their scale. Directly off the habitation area, we have a secondary control for the hangar section. So if someone needs to actually be en- allowed to enter into the hangar, you have a separate control room to allow you to open up the hangar doors to permit the additional ship to come in. Oh. Once again, the standard does, but the the whole animation, all of it's very alien. And obviously, yeah, when we get to kind of final art, we'll dress this up. So it's yeah, it, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Um, there does look to be some uh, functionality there because we don't want it all to be um, yeah, you know, space magic. Um, it still needs to feel like there is kind of mechanisms there that are supporting these these things lifting and and um, being able to kind of hover and, and float. Coming off the habitation area, we it's have looking two good staff so far lifts. to me. Man. So these ones would be specifically for the staff to allow Obviously, them to there's more work that needs to be done on it, but what they've here. got so um, far looks we'll, fantastic. We'll come back to them later oh, because gotta have some clipping. To show them, but they just give you more access just because of the size of the ship. We needed to have multiple ways to get up and down. Otherwise, if you want to get from one part to another, you'd have to run the entire length of the ship, go down the floor to run the entire length again. So we added wow. multiple ways to move up and down between the ship. Wow. So at the rear here, we have the staff, uh, sorry, we have the crew specific lift. This has access to all of the floors, unlike the customer lift. This is the passenger entrance area. So the lift uh, will go to this floor for all of the passengers, which then gives them a little foyer area before they enter whatever floor they're on. It's so alien. I love the way they. Oh, we have oh. the meeting area. So this is the, all the conference doors room are where opening differently. What was that? Come to discuss significant trade negotiations rather than I'm going buying a power plant, I'm going to buy fuel. This is where serious conversations and serious negotiations go. Wow. Yeah, this has got like a really nice view out over the um like the cargo oh, hold oh, as well, doesn't it? Yep. To the side of the actual meeting That's and delegation cool. room, we have the VIP suites. So obviously your VIP delegates are going to want something a bit nicer, a bit more special when it comes to where they're resting. So they have their own private chambers wow. so that they can rest and relax and freshen up before they actually go do any significant meetings. It's so elegant. And again, this, this, this the Banu the Banu ships in design are so elegant. Everything has just this this rich uh feel to it and the curves and you know this must be a absolute pain in the butt to design. This had to I mean even in this stage in this gray box stage this must have been absolutely just difficult to design with all these curves and meet this up. I mean, that is not easy to do, and they did really good. Loving the doors so far. Loving the uh, the trade room, how it looks over basically the hangar and everything that's stocked in the ship to kind of give you that, like, oh, we're trading a serious business mode. So far, that turret, the Professor Xavier room, I call it, I'm loving it. So far, I'm really loving the interior here. Exterior, I'm kind of on the fence still. Like, I, I really love the original, I love the original concept art of the Banu, you know, in my opinion. I love that look. Uh, had m- much more of an archaic kind of old banu feel to it you know like but that is again concept art when you try to physicalize this right and you're and you're putting it in the game obviously things change uh but you know like tech had said earlier he's like i kind of like that older version i did too but i'm telling you the inside here is just like killing it right now sort of room highlights um a lot of the uh 
I guess the shape language and the difficulties on the ship and is right that there, yeah. there, you know, everything's curved, everything flows, yeah, curve, and, and yeah. there is that kind of like the chandelier, real kind of like leading. That's awesome, um, like very opulent. Shapes that kind of like lead you through the ship. Oh, these as opposed doors to, are yeah, killing me. So I love these on, doors. Man. A lot of our uh, human manufactured ships, whereas you know everything's hard and, and angled and flat. Um, really, the only thing in this ship this, that's this flat is, is the floor. Fantastic. So the negotiation table has one seat at the top for the actual mediator, which obviously would be a member of the crew, and then even number seats on either side for the delegates to have their discussions. From the actual meeting room, you get a fantastic view of the cargo hold, where all of your goods would actually be stored. As you can see, the amount of cargo that the ship holds is colossal. (laughs) And just the sheer volume of it gives you this cavernous cathedral-like view of being stuck in the rafters of a a warehouse (laughs) worth of stock. Yeah, it gives you a real sense of how tall the ship actually is uh, when we get to the the, the market. What um, am I seeing here? You kind of get a glimpse at that. But it's not until this you get into someone like this that spans the whole, or well, even the whole fight. You've got a hanger above the, the What of this. am I um, seeing here? How, how big the ship actually is. Well, we're not going to be able to go through every single room and nook and cranny today. This is two biggest ships. So let's go to the market now and take a look at that. Oh, the market. So I think um, yeah, this is what a lot of the kind of customers wow. are going to see wow. when they first walk into the ship. Is this sort of like reveal um, of the market area and what we tried to do in? in- That's beautiful. This is inside the same ship. That vast hangar area. All that beautiful cargo and that profit sitting in there. Oh my goodness. And then this marketplace is beautiful. Man, this is giving me like ESO vibes, you know? This is giving me Morrowind vibes. It's giving me like old school ruins, kind of like Banu gives me that vibe, you know? Banu gives me that old school feel, that d and I don't know, man. I'm totally digging this. I really like this. In this I area really, is, really um, like the look kind of, of this. Everywhere you walk into it, you're kind of um, walking through a, a small tunnel or you know, quite a tight space. Oh and when God, you kind of explode. do walk into it, it does steal, then open up and you can see steal. that sort of like that, that grandeur and that height of the ship. And, you know, this is only two out of, I think it's five or six floors at this point of, of you know, the, the part of the ship My you're in. Um, but I think it's just a this nice kind of like reveal of the, the, the overall kind of. Uh, again, this just repeating that, that size and that verticality that, that we see in the other areas of the ship. Fantastic! Um, look at I the. I think we've already shown. Look at the even the banister areas. Like nothing's really that. It's symmetrical, but it's not. You know, it's it's like everything about this looks very alien, man. They curved it. It's like in a dome. The even the hallways like have like a tunnel kind of very very biological feel to it. You know it's it's really well done and a lot of the concept really art is there well already done. um but the idea here is that you've got this you know hollow in the middle that will kind of you know will allow um the the so these uh, are where the all the shops are going to be show off some of their you know um, buying and selling items bartering. That might not fit in the shops or might be you know too love valuable it. to place love in the shops it. um so yeah it's, it's, it's a very yeah exciting yeah it does damon you're well. right Okay, yeah, and the like last area we want to show you today yeah. is, is kind of the area that we spent a little bit more time on it's a little bit further along we tried to take some areas and push their what, visuals wow, so we've got a good understanding wow, of how much works involved wow, and you know what wow, the kind of like the final is going on. ship is actually going to look like um because it is such a large ship and there's what gonna be a lot of people ultimately this? working on it i think it's good to have that kind of key what? area that oh you can kind of refer God. to as, as you know yeah this, this is what the merchantman's all about and whilst <laughs> Each area of the ship will have its own feel, will have its own kind of <laughs> right. uh, Milk. style. You, you and took the words right forms. out of my mouth. Um, I think this is a good indication of um, the kind of elegance. <laughs> and, yeah, it's a community you imagine this room. Is the crew area. Let's have fun. And the uh, guest <laughs> area is going to be a level above this. Um, I think it gives you a good idea of, of what we're aiming for. The other thing is with the Banu, they're, they're very communal in how they actually yes, live they their are. lives. So. It didn't make sense to have separate quarters or separate right. captain's quarters because that's just good, not how good. they live. And getting the, the, the social pit for them to be able to sit around and talk and relax and socialize. I'm so it, glad it, they're it putting thought into this, sure that we got in, like this um, to line it up with lore to feel fine and, and the elegant, species. But also they're doing good. Only. And that's pretty much <laughs> where we're up to with the Banning Merchantmen at the moment. Um, this is... Room kind of as hot off the presses as it comes. There's a lot of areas of the ship we've not shown yet. 
we're really happy with the, wow. the progress we've made so far but at the moment oh, we are kind of at that point there. where we've got a, a skeleton crew like a, just kind of like a working out everything that we need to get done to deliver the ship nice. listen listen the lighting they got to hook that up with like a green emerald lighting you know greens and golds you know like a lot of greens and gold lighting everywhere you go you know with dark kind of vibes for the furniture and the walls get some like grays and some blacks and some browns hit it up with some gold accents you know a little filigree then fill it in with some green and some yellow and some gold lighting hitting that oh that would look fantastic like forget it game over i'm buying one like really when time permits really? we'll be able to ramp it up and bring bring on what the i miss what 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 what did i miss what i miss what am I talking about? The light. Look at this. this is, I'm like fascinated with it. I, I feel like I missed something. <sighs> what did I miss? The gun turned inside the room on the ceiling. Hold on. We're going to rewind. We're going to rewind. We're going to rewind. We're going to rewind here. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Kind of as hot off the press uh -huh. as it comes. There's a lot of areas Welcome, of the ship we've not shown yet. To we're the really happy with the, the progress we've made so far. But at the moment, we are kind of at that point where we've got a, a skeleton crew just kind of working out everything that we need to get done to deliver the ship <laughs> when time permits we'll be able to ramp it up and bring bring on more of the team to kind of get through the amount of work that's that's involved super excited with where it's up to i think it's going to be one of those <laughs> that kind of stand out one of those hallmark ships that kind of defines what star citizen is it shows that there's more to our universe than single seater fighters and and the likes I must have missed the turret off. So what did we learn this tonight. week? Well, she may not look like much just yet. Still has a long journey ahead of her. But if the Banu Defender before her is any indication, and given its sheer size and scale, the Banu Merchantman seems like it's going to shape up to be a landmark ship for Star Citizen when all is said and done. And as part of Alien Week, there are also these rad new paints available for select ships that you can see here. So check those out if, you know, Looking sweet as all heck is something you're interested in. Asperia is going We're nuts putting Star some extra paint on their I'm alien Jerry ships. Huckabee. We're still here on the eighth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building, the second floor of the upcoming new UK office, and this is where I'm told CR's office is going to be when he visits. <laughs> Also, this weekend was the first International Bar Citizen Weekend. So here's some imagery from the gathering <laughs> right studios around Using the world. Buzzwords. And don't forget to let us know on social where your events are being <laughs> held at, as we're going to be sending folks to select locations throughout the remainder of this year. We'll see you all next week. <laughs> that was great. That was really funny.